These are the answers to the periodic table practice quiz. Number one, in an early version of Mendeleev's periodic table from 1871, an element with a mass of 68 did not have an element symbol listed next to it, but a dash instead. Which of the following represents the most likely explanation for this situation? So let's take a look at the modern periodic table, and I'm going to focus on group 14, which contains the elements nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. Elements in the same group or family have similar chemical properties. In an early version of Mendeleev's periodic table, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic are located here in this horizontal section. So let's take a look at another part of Mendeleev's periodic table where that question mark or that dash is located. So we have boron, aluminum, and then a mystery element with atomic mass 68. Mendeleev predicted the existence of elements that had not yet been discovered. He predicted that an element with an atomic mass of 68 should have properties that are similar to boron and aluminum. So eventually, the element that is directly underneath aluminum on the modern periodic table, gallium, gallium was discovered and then it did have properties very similar to those that Mendeleev had predicted. So the correct answer to number one is B. He had predicted the existence of this element and that it should be located below aluminum, and it was known as gallium, eventually when it was discovered. All right, number two. Which of the following is the best reason to justify why two different elements should be located in the same group or family? Choice A says that the elements are both classified as non-metals and exist as gases at room temperature. Well, as you can see, the non-metals include a wide variety of elements and they have very different chemical properties. So just being a non-metal or being a gas is not specific enough. Choice B, the valence electrons of each element are located in an S orbital. Well, from this information, we can see that both group one and group two, so the alkali metals in group one, the alkaline earth metals in group two, would have their valence electrons located in an S orbital, and they do react differently because they're in separate groups. So we're looking for some reason why elements in the same group or family react in similar ways. The answer has to do with the valence electrons. So correct answer is D. Each element has the same number of valence electrons in its outermost energy level. In number three, we are given two different chemical formulas that are correct, BF3 and CO2. Now we have to select one of the following chemical formulas that is most likely to be correct based on this idea that elements located in the same group should react in similar ways and in the same proportions with other elements. So I'll start with BF3. Underneath boron are the elements aluminum and gallium. Underneath fluorine are the elements chlorine and bromine. So I can replace boron with aluminum or gallium and keep that same one to three ratio with fluorine. I can replace fluorine with chlorine and bromine and keep that same one to three ratio. Moving on to CO2, underneath carbon is silicon and germanium. Underneath oxygen is sulfur and selenium. I can replace the carbon with silicon and germanium and keep that same one to two ratio. I can replace oxygen with sulfur and selenium and keep that same one to two ratio. So our first choice says aluminum Br2. So the elements aluminum and Br are located underneath boron and fluorine, but there should have to be that same one to three ratio. So A is incorrect. For choice C, silicon is underneath carbon, but nitrogen is not in the same family as oxygen. So 
that element would not react in similar ways to oxygen. So the correct answer is not C. And then similarly, we have silicon and we have fluorine. Fluorine is not in the same family as oxygen. We don't have that one to two ratio. Silicon is not in the same family as boron. So the correct answer is B. Aluminum and chlorine are directly underneath boron and fluorine, and they do have that same one to three ratio comparing it to BF3. Number four. Which of the following information best justifies the fact that the average atomic mass of argon is slightly greater than the average atomic mass of potassium? So argon has a mass that's approximately 40, and potassium has a mass that's approximately 39. Argon has 18 protons, and I'll just use an example of an isotope of argon with a mass of 40. Potassium has 19 protons, and here's an example of an isotope of potassium with a mass of 39. So 18 plus 22 equals 40. So this particular isotope of argon would have 18 protons and 22 neutrons. 19 plus 20 is 39. So this isotope of potassium has 19 protons and 20 neutrons. So choice A says the most common isotopes of potassium have more protons. While that's correct, it wouldn't explain why potassium actually weighs less. Choice B says potassium would have more neutrons. Again, that would not be consistent with why potassium actually weighs less. Argon does not have more protons than potassium. It actually has fewer protons. So the correct answer is D. The most common isotopes of argon must have more neutrons, which is why it is slightly heavier than the element potassium. Number five, this has to do with the trends in atomic radius. Which of the following statements concerning atomic radius is true? So in general, atomic radius decreases as you move from left to right across a period. Atomic radius increases as you move from top to bottom down a group. So for lithium and neon, neon would be smaller than lithium. So the correct answer is not A. As far as nitrogen and phosphorus, phosphorus is further down in the group than nitrogen, so phosphorus is larger, nitrogen is smaller, so correct answer is not B. With respect to potassium and rubidium, rubidium is further down in the group, so potassium is actually smaller than rubidium, so the correct answer is not D. And as you can see, calcium and gallium are in the same period. And since size gets smaller as you go from left to right across a period, calcium should be larger than gallium. All right, number six. As you move from left to right across a period, the atomic radius tends to, well, the answer is decrease. So the correct answer is either A or B. Atomic radius decreases but the ionization energy, which is the energy required to remove an electron from the outer shell of an atom, that's going to increase from left to right across a period as it gets more difficult to remove an electron from these smaller atoms. Ionization energy values increase, so the correct answer is not A, but rather B. The reason for the Decrease in atomic radius as you move from left to right across a period is that the electrons experience a stronger attraction toward the nucleus. The valence electrons are in the same energy level, but the protons are increasing, which creates a stronger pull or attraction of the electrons toward the nucleus. All right, number seven, as you move down a group from top to bottom, the atomic radius tends to increase, so the answer is either C or D. And choice C says because as the number of electrons increases, the electrons experience greater repulsions. The reason why that answer is not correct is because we already talked about 
size getting smaller as you go from left to right across a period, and those elements actually do contain more electrons as you move from lithium to beryllium to boron and so forth. So just simply talking about more electrons is not specific enough. It's because the electrons are located in these increasingly higher energy levels. So as you move, from the shell, the outer shell, the energy level from one to two to three to four, those electrons are located farther and farther away from the nucleus. All right, number eight talks about both atomic radius and ionization energy. So let's take a look at those trends. Atomic radius decreases from left to right across a period, and the ionization energy generally tends to increase from left to right across a period. As you move from top to bottom down a group, atomic radius increases and the ionization energy values tend to decrease. So here we have these four elements, potassium, rubidium, bromine, and iodine. Let's take a look at the corners. So bottom left corner would be rubidium. Top right corner would be bromine in this particular set. Those are the extremes that we should be focusing on. So in the lower left, rubidium would have the largest atomic radius and the smallest ionization energy. And then based on these trends, looking at bromine, it would have the smallest atomic radius and the largest ionization energy. Now let's take a look at our four choices. Correct answer is C. Bromine has the smallest atomic radius in this set and the largest value for the ionization energy. All right, for questions 9 and 10, we're supposed to use the following diagram. We have two different atoms that are labeled A and B, and A has a larger atomic radius than B. Number 9, suppose that atoms A and B represent two different elements that are located in the halogen family which of the following statements is most likely to be true. So the halogen family is located in group 17, including the elements fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and they are examples of nonmetals. So what do we know about nonmetals in terms of reactivity? Well, since nonmetals, typically when they form stable ions, they gain electrons, the smaller the atom is, the stronger the attraction is for gaining electrons. Therefore, the smaller the atom, the more reactive the nonmetal is. So since choice A says that the reaction between element A and sodium, Na, should be more vigorous, that's not consistent. B should be more reactive if these are nonmetals and halogens. So we can eliminate choice A. And then choice B says that element A has a greater number of valence electrons. If they're in the same family, they would have the same number of valence electrons. So we can eliminate that choice. Choice C, the ionization energy, again, the energy required to remove an electron, should be less for element A than it is for element B. That is consistent with the fact that the valence electrons in A should be located farther away from the nucleus and easier to remove. So correct answer is C. All right, same diagram, but now we're moving on to question 10. Suppose that atoms A and B represent two different elements that are located in the alkali metal family, which the following statements is most likely to be true. Well, in general, metals react by losing electrons. And the larger the atom is, the easier it is to lose electrons. They tend to have smaller values for the ionization energy. So the larger the atom is, the more reactive that particular metal will be. Choice A, the reaction between element A and water should be more vigorous than the reaction between element B and water. That's consistent with the fact that A is larger, more reactive, easier to lose electrons. You may recall from the video in class that the alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium, the reactions with water got much more vigorous and violent as you move down from lithium all the way to cesium. All right, in number 11, comparing the sizes of the ions Cl- and K+, 
which of the following statements is true? So here's chlorine and potassium. Chlorine has 17 protons, potassium has 19 protons. If we have the ion Cl minus, that means that the atom gained one electron. So instead of 17 electrons, we have 18. In the case of K plus, that means we lost one electron. So instead of 19 electrons, we have 18 electrons. These two ions, Cl minus and K plus, have the same number of electrons, but they don't have the same size or the same ionic radius. The ion that has more protons, in this case K plus, will be smaller in size because these 18 electrons are going to be more strongly attracted to the positively charged nucleus. So when you have two ions with the same number of electrons, the ion with more protons will be smaller in size. Correct answer is B. All right, in number 12, we're changing an atom of aluminum to a stable ion with a charge of plus three. We have to decide if this is going to make the ion smaller or larger than the atom for aluminum. So the electron configuration of aluminum has 13 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p1. That's for the atom. When aluminum loses three electrons, it loses the three valence electrons. So the electron configuration of the aluminum 3 plus ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Al3 plus stops at the outer shell of level two, whereas the aluminum atom has an outer shell in level three. So consequently, Al3 plus will be smaller in size because it has a lower energy level that is closer to the nucleus. So correct answer is A. Aluminum 3 plus is smaller than Al because aluminum lost three electrons to form an ion. And that's a general rule, that when atoms lose electrons to form an ion, they will decrease in size. In number 13, we're talking about reactivity. And we have four elements, magnesium, barium, zinc, and lead. These are all examples of metals, and we have to figure out which one would have the most vigorous reaction when reacting with water. Metals react by losing electrons. Larger atoms have smaller values for their ionization energy and lose electrons more easily. So the general rule is the larger the metal atom, the more reactive it is. Atomic radius decreases from left to right across a period and increases from top to bottom down a group. Since we're looking for the atom that has the largest atomic radius, the metal that's the most reactive in this example would be barium in that lower left corner of the periodic table. So correct answer is B. Now in number 14, it's talking about which would be the most vigorous reaction when reacting with sodium. And so for sodium, because sodium is a metal, we're looking for a reaction with a non-metal. Chlorine, astatine, carbon, and lead. We can rule out lead as a metal. So the correct answer is either chlorine, astatine, or carbon, which are all non-metals. Non-metals react by gaining electrons. The smaller the atom, the stronger the attraction for electrons. So we're looking for the smallest atom in this set that should be the more reactive non-metal. Since atomic radius decreases from left to right and increases from top to bottom, we're looking for an element in the upper right corner of the periodic table. The correct answer would be chlorine. All right, let's take a look at number 15. We have a chart, and we need to fill in the missing information. So I'll start with fluorine, F, and there are nine electrons for the atom fluorine. The electron configuration for fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p5. We have to decide what the family name is, the number of electrons, and classify it as metal, non-metal, or metalloid. So fluorine is located in the halogen family, here you can see alkali metals, group one, alkaline earth metals, group two, halogens, group 17, 
and noble gases, group 18. So it's definitely a halogen. As far as the number of valence electrons, since fluorine is located in group 17, it has seven valence electrons. Here you can see the number of valence electrons, group 1, 1, group 2, 2, group 13, 3, and then so on and so forth up to the noble gases. So fluorine, seven valence electrons. And as far as the classification, since fluorine is in this green area, it's a nonmetal. So nonmetals include hydrogen and then all of the other elements on the right that are in green. The metalloids are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, and tellurium in pink. And all the other elements in white are classified as metals. And I'm not really classifying the radioactive elements near the bottom of the periodic table, but Again, that's the general classification of metals in white, nonmetals in green, metalloids in pink. So this is clearly fluorine, a nonmetal. Now for the next element, we don't know the symbol, but we know that the electron configuration is krypton 5s1. So let's find an element that has one more electron than krypton on the periodic table. Krypton has 36 electrons, Kr, this is 37, so rubidium is krypton 5s1, so that's Rb. It is located in the alkali metal family in group 1 and has one valence electron. So it's in the group 1, one valence electron, and certainly it is a metal. For our next element, the electron configuration is argon, which is 18 electrons, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. So 18 plus 2 is 20, plus 10 more is 30, and then plus 6 more is 36. We're looking for an element that has atomic number 36. So this element is, in fact, krypton, and that is a noble gas. It has eight valence electrons, and it is a nonmetal. Finally, we have silicon, Si. It has 14 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then we keep going, 3s2, 3p2. And if you wanted to abbreviate the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, you could simply write the element neon, Ne in brackets. So this particular element has 3s2 and 3p2. That's four valence electrons. So it's in the same family as carbon and germanium in group 14. And it is a metalloid. So four valence electrons, metalloid. All right, moving on to question 16. For each of the following pairs of substances, circle the substance that has the larger radius. So let's start with nitrogen versus phosphorus. They are in the same group. Atomic radius increases as you go from top to bottom down a group, so phosphorus is larger than nitrogen. The next one I'd like to take a look at is aluminum versus chlorine, Al versus Cl. They are two elements in the same period. Atomic radius decreases as you go from left to right across a period, so Al, aluminum, should be larger than Cl. Now let's deal with atoms versus ions. So we have sodium versus sodium plus. The electron configuration of sodium would be 11 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. But since sodium plus lost an electron, it stops at 2p6. The sodium plus should be smaller than sodium, and in general, when an atom loses electrons, its size decreases. Since the instructions say to circle the larger radius, we're going to circle the atom Na. In our next comparison, it's fluorine versus the fluoride ion, minus 1. So fluorine has 9 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, and if we add one more electron, in that same shell, now it has an extra electron. So because of electron-electron repulsions, that's going to make the fluoride ion larger in size. In general, when an atom gains electrons, the size increases. So we're circling the larger one. That will be F minus.
In our last two comparisons, these are both ions. Let's take a look at how many electrons each ion has. So for magnesium 2 plus, that would be 12 electrons for the atom, but since it lost two, it now has 10 electrons as a 2 plus ion. For oxygen, it normally has eight electrons, but we gained two electrons, so it also has 10 electrons. They're not the same size, Whoever has more protons will be smaller. So when you have two ions with the same number of electrons, you should compare the number of protons. The ion with more protons is smaller in size because the electrons are more strongly attracted to the nucleus. Magnesium has 12 protons and will be smaller. Oxygen has eight protons and will be larger. So in this set, we should circle the larger ion, which would be oxygen. And then in our final comparison in this table, we have aluminum 3 plus, which has 13 electrons, but it lost three, so it has 10. Chlorine minus, it had 17 electrons, but it gained one, so now it has 18. The electron configuration tells us that Al3 plus stops at the second energy level, 2p6, whereas chlorine minus stops at the third energy level, 3p6. Since the third energy level, those electrons are farther away from the nucleus, Cl- will be larger in size than Al3+. 18 electrons are larger than 10 because we're at the next energy level. All right, in our last question, we have parts A and B, and we have to circle the word that makes each sentence correct. We're starting with lithium and potassium. They are located in the same vertical column, so the same group. And as you may recall, we talked about this earlier in the video, metals react by losing electrons. The larger metal atoms, it's easier for them to lose electrons. They have smaller values for ionization energy. And the larger the atom, the more reactive it is. So for example, cesium is the most reactive of the alkali metals. So as I move down from lithium to sodium to potassium, potassium will react more vigorously with water. Atoms of lithium and potassium normally lose electrons. And in general, the lower the value for the ionization energy, the easier it is to lose electrons and the more reactive the metal will be. All right, in part B, now we're looking at fluorine and bromine. They are also in the same group, the same vertical column. And when reacting with a metal, such as aluminum, the one that's the more reactive has to do with gaining electrons. So nonmetals react by gaining electrons. The smaller the atom, the stronger the attraction for electrons. So the smaller the atom is, the more reactive that nonmetal will be. So fluorine is smaller and therefore more reactive. In general, the smaller the atomic radius, the more reactive the nonmetal will be. Again, these are gaining electrons to form stable ions. All right, well, that is the end of the video. Again, these were the answers and explanations for the periodic table practice quiz. I hope that that was helpful. Thanks for watching and good luck studying for your quiz.